Hello and welcome once again to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marta, as always, I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Now today you're going to get two videos, you lucky, lucky people. Now, of course, you're watching the one by myself. Enjoy. But there is going to be one from Paul, maybe before mine, maybe after. I don't know. Can't see across time and space, unfortunately. Anywho, we're going to start things off today with some very interesting news out of the GPU market in China. So, what we basically have is a report that a Chinese GPU manufacturer, whose name I'm going to attempt to pronounce correctly by the name of Changsha Zingsha Zingjia, sorry, excuse me, Microelectronics, is apparently at the pre-research stage of creating a graphics card which will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the GTX 1080. So obviously, it's going to be a while before it actually enters the market, but apparently the company have been demonstrating some pretty significant progress at a snappy pace in the research department. So obviously, this is not intended to be a top-end card, because, well, by the time it comes out, we're most likely going to at least know what Ampere is, assuming that's the next generation, it might even be out, you know, we probably know what AMD's planning for after Navi, that sort of thing. But it's still going to be looking impressive because at the moment at least they use the JM200 series GPU which is a 28nm process based GPU and apparently at the moment it is delivering GPU performance on par with the GT640 from Nvidia but it has a much much lower power consumption the 640 from Nvidia is a 50 watt TDP but the GM7200 is meant to have a power consumption of just 10 watts so power demand versus power delivery there is actually quite significant and well the 65 nm Jingmei JM5400 GPUs are already considered reliable enough to be used in displays of military aircraft so the long and short of it is yes they're a couple of years behind the curve here but it's still more competition in the market and if they continue at this pace, who knows what more they could be capable of. We have a statement here from a report from CN Becher, which says, quote, The company's next generation chip research and development has entered the engineering development stage, and the feasibility demonstration and program demonstrations have been completed, and the front-end design and software design are underway. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to see such insane level of energy efficiency in the GTX 1080 equivalent here. So we're going to see a 200 watt TDP, sorry, for the JM9271 versus the 180 TDP of GTX 1080. So it is going to be more power hungry than the original, but it's also going to be on a 28 nm process node in comparison to the 16 nm process that Nvidia used for Pascal. So while we're not seeing the crazy power efficiency that we saw, or we are seeing, sorry, should I say, on the current generation of what they have out there, they are still doing it on a much larger process. So I'm very curious to see what they bring out in the future. And obviously, we've been talking a lot lately about how we need more competition in, in any market, really, and how it's great that AMD have finally become more competitive, you know, the comeback kings, as it were. And obviously, we've got Intel who are going to be entering the discrete GPU market as well. So in a few years, who knows, these guys could also be a big player as well. At the moment, they're playing catch-up a little bit, but still, curious to see what they have in store. And let's not forget the absolute monstrous size of the Chinese market as well. So, let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. We're going to move on now to a couple of things regarding Sony and PlayStation. So, the first of which is actually regarding their PlayStation exclusives. Now, we have talked a lot about how just jealously Sony guards their exclusives like when Sony says that something is only on the PS4 at most you might see it on the next generation like we saw with The Last of Us but you won't ever see it on the Xbox One or PC you know God of War, Bloodborne, Last of Us 1 and 2, Until Dawn these are just a few of the games that are at the moment only on the PlayStation 4 so I mean I'm pretty salty but most says God of War on PC yes yes please Bloodborne on PC Make my dreams come true, Sony. But in all seriousness, what we have is some comments from Sean Layden, who heads SIE, Sony Interactive Entertainment, and he made some comments in an interview with Bloomberg, which you will find linked in the description below this video. 
So he doesn't outright come out and confirm that yes, we are going to be seeing Sony exclusives come to PC, but he does kind of hint that that may be a possibility in the future. And he says, quote, we must support the PlayStation platform. That is non-negotiable. That said, you will see in the future some titles coming out of my collection of studios, which may need to lean into a wider installed base. So, the wording here is interesting. Is this just going to be future games? Like, new games? His wording kind of implies that, but it doesn't really concretely say that. And it doesn't really concretely say anything, in all fairness, but it does hint that we are going to be seeing something that n would normally be gated to PlayStation 5 slash PS4 come out on other platforms. And... I think this would be a huge win for gamers, to be honest with you. I mean, Microsoft have made no secret of how much they're gearing up with Project Scarlet, and you know, they've been buying studios left, right, and centre. They've been really honest about the fact that, look, they know the Xbox One and its lack of exclusives is a bit of a meme, and they kind of want to address that. And obviously, Sony has won this generation with the PS4, and while Microsoft's not exactly going to go under anytime soon, they would obviously rather it'd be a slightly closer competition at least next time around. So they are not kidding around. And Sony obviously know this. They may even know stuff about the specs and know more about the games that are being developed over there. And I'm starting to think, okay, we might need to think about sort of changing up our strategy a little bit here. Or maybe this is something they've been thinking about doing anyway. And this is going to be like a huge thing that they're going to be announcing at E3 that this selection of games is coming to PC as well, and this game that we just announced is coming to PC. I mean, if they if they did say that certain games, like Bloodborne, just because <laughs> my dream, Sony, okay, was coming out on PC, that would be huge. That would be a massive win for Sony, and it would literally print them money, I think, if they chose their games carefully. Will we see every game of theirs come out on PC? Probably not. But some is better than none in my opinion. But let me know your thoughts guys, would you like to see this happen, and if so, if it was just a select selection of games that was coming to PC from Sony, what would you like to see? Let me know your thoughts. So, we're going to talk more about that PS5 design pattern that I discussed the other day. So in case you missed my video the other day, you may have seen this alleged leaked pattern of a what is, can only be a PlayStation 5 design, and it looks rather odd. Now, Paul has written actually an article on this new development that we have at our website, which is redgamingtech.com, where you'll find the article linked in the description below. But basically what we have is a claim from a developer that the leaked patent is actually a PlayStation 5 development kit, which is what many of you posed in the comments of my last video that it most likely was, and to be honest, I was very much in agreement. And this was according to Matthew Stott, who is a Codemasters senior artist. His profile is now set to private, so I've got a feeling that he did a bit of an oopsie here. But he did say, quote, it's a dev kit, we have some in the office, Sony Patton chose PlayStation 5 dev, dev kit, or maybe even the console itself. So, obviously take this with a pinch of salt, but the fact that his account is now private does lead me to believe that he said something he shouldn't, Sony gave him a crack across the wrist and now he's like, okay, okay, I'm sorry, and it is actually what the dev kit looks like. Doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be what the final design is, of course. Dev kits often look very different to their actual consumer counterparts, but it's at least what it looks like at the moment, and what we eventually end up seeing on our shelves could be a refined version of this. And to be honest, given that this PDF that we saw leaked b before does look pretty legit, I wouldn't be surprised if this was a dev kit, but of course, do take this with a pinch of salt. But go check out Paul's write-up. He has discussed at length more about this, everything we know about the PlayStation 5, and his opinions on it. So, again, you will find that linked below. So we're going to finish up today's proceedings with something fresh from Gamescom, the Smack Z PC handheld. So, the Smack Z, the PC handheld which was doing the rounds some time ago now, is being showcased at Gamescom 2019. So what we actually see inside the device is an AMD Ryzen embedded SoC with Vega 11 graphics, the embedded V187B to be exact just rolls right off the tongue, which has 32 gigs of RAM and a 480 gigabyte SSD. And the processor actually has 11 GPU cores and a higher frequency, which is a frequency of 3.35 GHz. 
For those of you who have perhaps missed all the kerfuffle about this before, it is pretty much what I said already, it is a way to play PC games on the go. Apologies for that extremely loud traffic, I'm quite far away from the road, so the fact that it was so clear is actually quite impressive. Anyway, so, you can find a link to their website in the description below this video if you want to learn more about it, um, but basically allows you access to PC games, Steam, Origin, GOG, etc and it claims it can run quote-unquote any PC game. I don't know if they mean that literally, doubt it. Regardless, you can even do stuff like connect to keyboard, mouse or screen, and can be used just like a desktop PC, but the actual handheld itself has a six inch HD screen. So basically, it is a portable PC, and I will admit I'm interested to see what this is actually is capable of. Unsurprisingly, this ain't cheap. It's like a thousand pounds, so yeah. Yikes, the price, but what they're promising is uh, definitely bold, and I'd love to get my hands on a review sample, but uh, might as well ask for bacon to rain from the sky. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.